I said, I'm going to share, share this with the children of God, the inspiration. Now, what, what we have is really a preparation for the Easter season, 2022. Easter season kicks off uh, probably this month and it ends in April, this year, a little late uh, in April. But then there's a number of things that happen during that season. One of the biggest things that happened, of course, is with the Jews, is the Passover, the remembrance of the Passover feast. Uh, and with Christians, it's actually the communion service. But the two are kind of hooked together. They never separated. Somebody, I was in conversation with somebody last week, the week before last, about the whole issue of New Testament versus Old Testament. And I try to explain to them that the old and the new is all met, is all together. You can't have the old. Bishop, unmute yourself. Okay, how's that? Is that a little better? There you go, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. So we're going to take a look at preparing for the Easter season, Easter season by looking at uh, elements of the Passover, the beginnings of the Passover, and how important it was the message that God gives. Uh, during during the, the uh, communion service, we 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 do the wine. Uh, I think we do. Do we do it two times or one time? We do it one time. We drink wine one time during the ceremony, right? Am I right, uh, Catherine? Okay. But actually, it was done four times during the Passover when they would come sit down together, do the Passover meal, which is a forerunner to the to, uh, uh, sacrament. They did it four times. By the time they got to the fourth time, that fourth cup is when the Lord gave out some of the most encouraging words that you ever could hear from God to his people. Uh, now, if you remember correctly, these people just come out the ordeal of their life, almost like the Ukrainian. They were running from the Egyptians. They had got expelled uh, from their country, from their homes. Uh, they were living in a foreign land. They had been there for almost 400 years. They had nowhere to go. They had been praying and crying and screaming to the Lord, get us out of this mess that we're in. And he finally did. Uh, one of the ways that he did it, he said, okay, I'm gonna protect you. Put some blood on your doorpost so we'll know who's on God's side. And when I come through to destroy the, the, uh, the death angels that have been trying to destroy y'all, you'll be free. Get yourself up, get out of there. And then he said, when you leave, don't take nothing with you. Just run. Just get out. Ukrainians are doing almost basically the same thing. They're getting their little stuff and they're just getting out of there. But I believe that uh, if we take a look at this in a greater view, that behind all this is the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. So April will be dedicated to fasting and deliverance, all of April. March is going to be dedicated to prayer uh, with special healing services on Palm Sunday and healing messages by Palm Sunday. Hopefully, your pastor will preach that, that Palm Sunday healing message. I thank God that the healing and the deliverance and the recovery to my body is coming really rapidly. Uh, well, a tremendous day today. I was all over the place today, so I probably need to go to bed and lay down and rest. But I'm saying the healing is there, and I feel it in my, my myself. Everybody keep telling me you just need time for recovery, and I do believe that. It's awful hard to, to recover when you used to getting up and going and coming home when you get ready to come home. But uh, on Sunday, I'm praying to God that I'm back up to speed at least uh, enough to uh, do what I normally do, and that is preach the word of God. All of these services will culminate in a grand resurrection Sunday, which this year is April the 24th, if I'm not mistaken, that's Easter Sunday. So we start fasting, I mean, praying tomorrow, and we'll end this whole month and a half, two months of consecration on Easter Sunday. So get yourself ready for what the Lord is getting ready to do. If you need healing, this is your time for healing. If you need help, this is your time for help. If you need money, this is time for you to ask God to give you exactly what you need. And I believe by the grace of God, he's going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. If the things that you need, you can't even tell nobody. He's going to do it because that's the kind of God it is that we're serving, a great God. Bible class was focused on issues of the day. During this time period, we want to take a look at issues of the day. We want to talk about understanding our times 
and I, I, I listed some of the issues that we might need to look into because they are issues of the day. The Supreme Court is getting ready to go through a major attack on the whole issue of abortion all over again. So the country is getting ready to split itself down the middle. So we're going to take a look at abortion from a biblical and scriptural point of view to see exactly what does God say about this issue that is destroying America and has done it for the last almost 50 years. We're going to talk about pre-Christ uh, uh, pestilences and how close are we to the end. This pestilence that we're in now is really a precursor to uh, the pestilence that he talked about in the book of Matthew uh, when he said there should be pestilence and diseases before the coming of the Lord. Again, I tell you, the Old Testament and the New Testament is tied in and together. Uh, this uh, coronavirus is really nothing but a precursor, an antichrist precursor. Things probably are going to get worse than this, maybe not in the immediate future, but eventually. You haven't seen no variants like you're going to see because this all ends towards the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a thing that's called just war versus unjust war uh, because the Russians are saying that their attack on Ukraine is a just war. Uh, and But there are scriptures in the Bible that gives us some guidelines to if war should be fought, when they should be fought, what is just and what is unjust. An excellent conversation that you could easily have with somebody who's trying to put this thing together. And we're going to talk about Russia in terms of how do they fit into the end times. Uh, we usually just talk about the country of Israel when we talk about the end times, but Russia plays a prominent role in the end times. According to the scriptures, it is going to be Russia that's going to attack Israel, which will force us to attack Russia which then will end up in the biggest war of all wars, Armageddon. So we're going to talk about that. So this last uh, month of Bible classes, we will talk about the issues of the day and hope that you uh, enjoy them and get something out of them. I try to ask God to give me the kind of lessons that at least make us think and at least make us look beyond what we normally look beyond. Tonight, I'm talking about the nine blessings of the Passover. You to take notes is excellent. Uh, study here, the nine blessings of Passover. The feast of Passover commissioned by God to celebrate the children of Israel's escape from Egypt or the great Exodus. The escape from Egypt was called the Exodus is when they finally got up and got out of there. They had been there 400 years. Uh, so that, I don't know how many generation that is. A generation meant 40 years. Uh, that's uh, what? Yeah. 100 generations. Somebody help me mathematically quickly. Well, you give it to me before we go here. Uh, since it was created for Jews, should we as Christians be obliged to celebrate it? Should we celebrate Passover even though it was a Jewish holiday? It continues to be one. A, a real Jew will celebrate Passover. Of course, the simple answer is we should celebrate it, and we do, because when Jesus came, he continued Judaism. Uh, he just magnified it, uh, and he just took the pieces of Judaism, uh, and, and he explained to them that now I'm here, I'm God, and I am the one that should be celebrated. Uh, and so who, somebody give me, who said that? Okay. I said uh, it was Terry. Ten, okay, thank you, Deacon. Ten generations that they had been locked up in Egypt, and then they finally got out. They got out. And you know the story how they got out. It wasn't like they just opened up the doors and let them out. They tried to keep them. Uh, they tried to make them stay, just like the Russians tried to make the Ukrainians stay, but they wanted the Ukrainians to give up their sovereignty and their nat nationhood, uh, and they said no. And so then they told them, well, then get out. And the same way with the Jewish situation. Uh, the Pharaoh said, y'all can stay, but you got to do what we say. You got to be a part of the Egyptian nation. And they said, no, we're not doing that no more. And so because they didn't do it, they told them, well, get your stuff and get out. The only people that can stay, they're saying, is men from the ages of uh, 18 to 60. They got to stay. But they want all the women and the children out of Ukraine. And we're told that 600,000 have left so far. 
it's almost a million people. So when it's all said, done and over, this country is gonna be decimated. This country meaning Ukraine with the whole population just moving out. Uh, Passover and sacrament, the holy taking of the communion is through and about the remembrance of salvation. That's why it's easy for us to celebrate with the Jews Passover through consecration because they're both about the same thing. For the Jews, Passover was about being saved from the destruction of Israel, uh, of Egypt. And for us, it's about being saved from the destruction of our own selves. All of this comes through God. And when salvation comes to us, it's about passing over our sins. When it came to the Jews, it was about salvation out of the hands of the Egyptians. So should we celebrate Passover? We do, we should. Even though we're not Jews, we do celebrate uh, elements of uh, Passover and especially during the Passover meal. That's what we celebrate when we sit down together as brothers and sisters and bring back to our remembrance how the blood passed over us and how uh, for the Jews, salvation came when Pharaoh was forced to let them go. Uh, no more had they, they, were they in the bondage, but he finally let them go. And that's the genius of this whole thing. It's about God letting you go, finally freeing you from being under subjection of a Pharaoh, of, a, of a, somebody who got their foot on your neck, somebody who's trying to destroy you. That's what consecration is about. That's what sacrament celebration is about. That's what Calvary was about. Calvary was about the, the Lord finally getting your attention and getting the attention of Satan and getting the attention of Pharaoh to let my people go. We're tired of this. These people have been under subjection all this time. They haven't done anything to you. Let them go. Now, what got God to that point? What got Jesus Christ to the point? The prayers, the fasting, and the living righteousness of the children of God. You go to the throne of God and you go there, stay there long enough. God's got to do something because he is your father and you are his child. He's not going to let you suffer forever. Now, the, what I really love about the Lord, and you do too, is that even in the suffering, the Lord bless you. 400 years that they were suffering, but the Lord blessed them. He had them grow so rapidly until by the time they left Egypt, they in many points and spots was larger than the Egyptian population was. They said that the Jewish women was having babies like crazy. They were married, I bring that to your attention. They were married though. But they was having children like crazy. And so one of the reasons why the Jews, uh, the Egyptians had to get rid of them because they were starting to outnumber the, uh, the, the Egyptians, the Ukrainians. One of the problems that they were having, the Russians having with the Ukrainians is that Ukraine was getting bigger and more popular than Russia in its culture and in so many of its ways. And so they said, we got to do something to these people. Either we embrace them as our citizens, make them become Russian, or, or we got to get rid of them. And so that's what they did. With the partition would come nine okay. blessings, Passover, and with the, the, uh, the last supper meal. And then I'm going to end up by talking about the four cups of wine, because part of the Passover celebration was they took a cup of wine before the meal, then they took a cup of wine in the middle of the meal, they took one two thirds way of the meal and they were more or less toast. And then the last, uh, uh, at the end of the ceremony, they would take another cup of wine. During the last supper, the Lord took one cup, cup, not three, not four. And he did this at the very end. But when he did, he gave them this promise. One, the promise of divine protection. He says in Exodus 23 and 20, and all this is recorded in the 23rd chapter, 20 verses, <laughs> Exodus. And this one, the Lord really declares he's going to bless you. You are going to get blessed if you believe this word. He said, I promise divine protection. I decree and declare that I will have divine protection over my family, over your family. He says, I'm going to protect you. And this is what happened when them children of the rivers got to running out of Egypt. He protected their families. And behold, I will send an angel before you. 
to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. God didn't just let them leave Egypt, but he had prepared a place for them. It was called the promised land. He told them, I'm going to lead you to the promised land. I'm going to take you where you got to go. I'm going to be the head child. I'm going to bless your family. Some of you listening to me and the sound of my voice tonight have been so blessed. You have been miraculously blessed and you don't even know it. You don't appreciate it. You don't show it. And I know you can say, well, I ain't got to be running around hollering, talking about I'm blessed all the time. But some of us got to do that. Some of us got to holler around and scream and holler that I'm blessed so we can keep our minds in check and in control. But he says the first promise, divine protection, I'm going to protect you. When you get out of Egypt, don't worry about nothing. I'm going to protect you. And he did. You know what happened. They got out of Egypt and they ran through the flood. The Lord dried the Red Sea up and they walked through the Red Sea until they got to the other side of the Red Sea. And then they proceeded to the promised land. Now, we know they ran some difficulty trying to get to the promised land. It took them another 40 years to get to the promised land, but they was out of Egypt. And the Lord did protect it. And he sent an angel. This brings up the issue of how important the angels are to lead and to guide you and to bring you into a place. This is what I like in the 23rd chapter and 30 verse of Exodus, a place where I have prepared. God has already prepared your blessing. Why can't you believe that? He's already opened the door. He's already made the way for your blessing. I prepared this for you. You don't have to worry about nothing. That's the first problem. Let me go to the second promise here. As I said, I'm moving rather rapidly here tonight. Y'all don't want to miss President Biden. Second promise he gives them. He says, positioning provides protection, protection from your enemies. So I'm going to protect you from your enemies. I declare and decree that I will be in correct alignment and at the center of the Lord's will. But if you indeed obey my voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. The Lord is waiting for the opportunity to fight for you. He's waiting, just waiting to be an enemy to your enemy. How powerful is that? How, how potent is that? How serious is that? The reason that you have not been overtaken because God have attacked your enemies. Enemies, those that's after you that you don't even know that's after you. Uh, Sometimes I talk, I talk about how weak we can be as saints. We run behind anybody and anything. And some of the people we're running behind are really our enemies. Some of the people we're trying to hang with, they are our enemies. But the Lord said, I protect you from danger seen and unseen. When you don't even know that you're under attack, I'm right there trying to help you get through. Third promise he gives them during the, the uh, consecration service. He says, I'm commissioning divine authority. I declare and I decree that I will be commissioned this year to walk in divine authority. This is your year. This pandemic, they tell us that we're on the backside of it. This is your year to take authority. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor their gods, nor do anything according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. Exodus 23, 24. This is your year. 2022 is your year. You've gotten through. You've gotten through thus far. You've gotten through all of the calamity. Three years we've been in this pestilence and God has given you strength to withstand. He let you hold on long enough for them to find a vaccine. You've gotten through. He's given you authority. Uh, all you got to do for many troubles that you have is learn how to call on the name of Jesus. Because in that name is the power and the authority. We don't use the name enough, church. We don't use that name enough. We use it, but not enough. We don't do it loud enough. But we need to do it really loud. When I say loud, I don't mean just vocally, but we need to do it from the intense side of our heart. 
We got to get the point where we holler so loud until the Lord himself will dispatch angels to take care of your situation. You haven't hollered loud enough. That's what your issue is. It's not God is not able and capable and want to. It's you. You haven't screamed loud enough. And when I say scream loud enough, your praise got to get louder. That's why I love to hear Sister Rosie on Sunday morning holler out. Because you got to learn how to let me open my mouth and scream Jesus. He didn't give you that name for no reason at all. There's power in the name of Jesus. And when you call it, it, it the power is in the tongue. The power is in your tongue. That's where the power is. The Satan wants you to keep that stuff inside of you. He don't want you to scream it out. He don't want you to shout it out. He don't want you to testify it out. But when you learn how to move away from the shame and take authority in the name of Jesus, he's able. The fourth blessing that comes from communion service. This is affect me. This is when I was reading and, and just uh, contemplating and meditating. Supernatural healing and kingdom prosperity. Because I definitely believe this is what happened to me this year. Uh, as the Lord healed my body and continues to heal my body, that, that supernatural health. I heard my brother say this week, we was in conversation, and he was talking to somebody about me and my condition, and they asked him how I was doing. He told me it was a miraculous healing. That's what the Lord ready to do. Some miraculous things for us in a mighty way. He, a miraculous means things that don't normally happen to to you, things that don't, don't suppose to happen to you. You see, I got enough sense to realize that during this pandemic, I probably was supposed to have been gone, you know, and I know I thank God for the medical attention and, and all that kind of stuff, the vaccinations and all that. Had not I had all those, it would probably a whole other story. But I know at the bottom line of all of that was Jesus. It wasn't no vaccination, it was Jesus that got in the vaccination and declared the authority and it's in his name and the power is in his name. That's what this was. And that's what he said, this is your blessing. This is the fourth blessing that comes from the communion service and the Passover meal, supernatural healing and kingdom prosperity. Things are going to come to you this year that you didn't think was even possible. Things that you don't ask God for and forgot that you even asked him. Things that you ask for, and the devil tell you that that's, un, that's beyond belief. Ask for something smaller, something simpler, something not as important. But you ask for God what he put in your heart and watch God do a great thing for you. He said, I declare and I decree that I will walk in godly health. Every morning when you pray, add this to your prayer. I will walk in godly health and kingdom prosperity. So you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless you. Uh, bread and water, with bread and water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. This is what God told the people uh, as they're getting ready to leave Egypt. I'm going to take sickness away from you. And if I'm not mistaken, the scripture in the Old Testament and books of Exodus, they'll say they went for almost 40 years without even being sick. Protection for more, uh, they went for that long without even being sick. Uh, the fifth blessing, protection for Malta multiplication and longevity. That's what the Lord will do for you as well, too. He will multiply what you already got. He will multiply what you got. I, sometimes I just think about the Lord after I get through complaining. And then when I get through complaining, I realize that everything I got, everything that I am, everything I'm not belongs to the Lord. And I have everything that I need when I need it because God has given me that authority to believe him. If you can grab a hold of that authority and believe God, I declare and I decree, I am free from all satanic witchcraft, false, the, 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 the demons, hexes, uh, bell structures that lead to the abortion of my, my uh, request. Uh, anything that, that suffers miscarriage, is I won't go through it because God has given me deliverance. He's giving you deliverance. When he brought you out of Egypt, he gave you a special anointing that the devil himself can't take away from you. 
uh, a God that gives you strength, that gives you power. Some of the things that you're enduring, you couldn't endure without the Lord, but that's the kind of God we serve. Sixth blessing that comes from communion, a godly release of fear and respect from your enemies. What will happen to you is that people who you should be afraid of will be frightened of you. People that you should have a great amount of respect for will have respect for you. And what they will respect is that Holy Ghost that's in you. They'll stop cussing around you. They'll stop all the junk that they do around everybody else in front of you because that's a blessing that comes from Passover and consecration during communion services. I declare they will respect the God in you and the anointing that is on you and will cause confusion among them. You remember the battle in the Old Testament where the Lord says, this battle is not yours, but mine. And the, the, the armies turned on each other and they started to fight and destroy each other. That's how the devil worked with you. The devil means you harm, but God will take the harm and turn it into a good situation for you. For you, he'll do it. And the enemies that attack you sometimes get together. The Lord will have them attack each other and you'll come out the winner. This is the kind of faith God wants us to develop in him. Uh, the seventh blessing that we receive from the Lord, from Passover and from communion service, the Lord will drive the enemy out. I declare that the warring angels and heavenly hosts of Zion will be released from heaven to do spiritual warfare on, on your behalf and will send harness before you. This is our scripture. They will drive them out. The Hittites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It looked like it's prospering, but it will not prosper. If it's designed to take you out, it will take itself out first. And all of this came through the Passover when the Lord told them, put some blood over your doorpost so that you'll be protected. And he told us in the New Testament, you ain't got to put no blood on your doorpost. All you got to do is be baptized in Jesus' name, fill the Holy Ghost, and get up and walk like a man or like a woman. No enemy can stop you. No enemy can hurt you. No, nothing devised against you. Oh, my God, you develop that kind of faith, and you'll see your life take a turn for the better. Uh, if you don't have that kind of faith, don't mean you're not saved, but it means there's something you can work for. The eighth blessing that comes from communion and Passover, the Lord shall give you dominion and increase your inheritance. He'll give you dominion over the things around you. Increase your inheritance means that you leave something to the people who got to come behind you. There are people looking at you. Some of you got children. Some of you got children that's looking at you right now. Their, their salvation will be in hand. Uh, I went to my father-in-law's funeral a couple of weeks back. And what was remarkable to me is that every, all of the children in that household is either saved. I think they all saved. They're almost like my brothers and sisters. Or they all been saved. But that inheritance come from what he left. He left a legacy until his children all knew the Lord. Many of our families are like that. And if your family's not like that, this is the prayer you got to pray. Lord, save my kids. Save my relatives. Let my relatives inherit my herit inheritance. Let them enjoy my legacy. You see, sometimes people pass, they leave, they've been in church, and they don't, none of their people are saved. None, nobody. You know, when you go to a saint's funeral, you read, saints don't fall out all over the floor screaming, hollering, pulling the air out, jumping and carrying on. When you realize salvation. Nine. Ninth blessing that comes from understanding the Passover, understanding the blood on the doorpost, understanding uh, the consecration service, understanding communion, freedom from corrupt covenants. The Lord will keep you out of stuff that's corrupt and away from people that's corrupt. They shall not dwell in your land lest you make a sin against them and allow it to be so. 
that nobody that means you ill will be able to do you harm unless you let them. And some of us, again, we get with the wrong people. We get with people who don't believe the Lord. We get people who are not living holy. We get with people who got junk in their mind, mess in their uh, livelihood. And then we wonder why we can't get nowhere in the Lord. Well, you might need to start at who are you hanging with? You know, you might be hanging with somebody who praying against you rather than for you. And if they're praying against you, you definitely don't want to be with that person. Or every time you talk about the Lord, they try to move it in another direction. Or they try to the, the, belittle your faith. You see, freedom from corrupt covenant. They shall not dwell in your land lest you make a sin against them and allow it to be so. This is what God told Israel. They was coming out of Egypt. These people won't be able to live with you. going to be too much holiness in your land. They will have to get up and get out of there. Because you, what you got is too powerful. And they don't want what you got because, because it's too powerful. This was created for you. These are the freedoms that come from the communion service. Now, by the time they got to the fourth cup at the very end of communion, communion he took that cup, put it up in the air, and drunk the cup of salvation. And all of the disciples that were there, 12 of them was there, was blessed tremendously. We're getting ready for a blessing as we move towards communion. Communion is not for a month or so, but we're moving that direction. This is the Easter season that we're in. We're headed in that season. Let's make this the most different communion service that we have ever had. Let us, let us bring it together with Passover uh, because that's one of the, the uh, ordinances and one of the uh, sacraments that the Lord moved from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Again, people say, well, the Old Testament has not got nothing to do with the New Testament, but it does. And this is one example where the old and the new come together uh, during the communion services. All right? So we're moving that direction. And we're looking for the nine blessings that comes with communion and comes with consecration, which starts now. Church says amen. Amen. God bless y'all. How many looking for a blessing this year during this Easter holiday?